Welcome to a new episode of my High Performance Java Persistence video course. In this episode, we are going to talk about JDBC batch updates. First, we will discuss about JDBC statement and prepare statement batching. Afterward, we will see how to configure JDBC batch updates when using Hibernate. In the end, we will see how bulk processing works and why you should consider it as an alternative to JDBC batching. JDBC 2.0 introduced batch updates so that multiple insert, update or delete statements can be grouped into a single database request. Sending multiple statements in a single request reduces the number of database round trips, therefore decreasing transaction response time. Even if the JDBC specification uses the term updates, insert and delete statements can be batched as well. And at the API level, JDBC supports batching for JavaSQL statement, JavaSQL prepare statement, and JavaSQL callable statements. Not only each database driver is distinct, but even different versions of the same driver might require implementation-specific configurations when it comes to batching statements. For instance, the Oracle JDBC driver does not actually support batching for statement and callable statements, and it simply ignores the batching API executing each of these two statement types separately. For executing static SQL statements, JDBC defines the statement interface, which supports batching as illustrated by the following example. The addBatch method is used to enqueue multiple statements at the JDBC driver level. The execute batch method flushes the pending batch statements and sends them to the database in a single database request. The numbers of database rows affected by each statement is included in the integer array returned by the execute batch method. The following graph depicts how different JDBC drivers behave when varying the JDBC batch size for plain JDBC statements. The test measures the time it takes to insert 1000 post rows, each post having four commands as well. Depending on the underlying relational database, batching plain statements is more or less effective. Although it implements the JDBC specification, by default the MySQL JDBC driver does not send the batch statements in a single request. For this purpose, the JDBC driver defines the rewrite batch statements connection property so that statements get rewritten into a single string variable. In order to fetch the auto-generated row keys, the batch must contain insert statements only. For prepare statements, this property rewrites the batch insert statements into a multi-value insert. Unfortunately, the driver is not able to use server-side prepare statements when enabling rewriting. Without setting this property, the MySQL driver simply executes each DML statement separately, therefore defeating the purpose of batching. The following graph demonstrates how statement rewriting performs against the default behavior of the MySQL JDBC driver. Rewriting static statements seems to make a difference as long as the batch size is not too large. In practice, it is common to use a relatively small batch size to reduce both the client-side memory footprint and to avoid congesting the server from suddenly processing a huge batch load. For parameterized statements, which is a very common enterprise application requirement, the JDBC statement is a poor fit because the only option for varying the executing SQL statement is through string manipulation. Using a string template or concatenating string tokens is risky as it makes the data access logic vulnerable to SQL injection attacks. To address this shortcoming, JDBC offers the prepare statement interface for binding parameters in a safe manner. The driver must validate the provided parameter at runtime, therefore discarding unexpected input values. Because a prepare statement is associated with a single DML statement, the batch update can group multiple parameter values belonging to the same prepare statement. The execute batch method is inherited from the JDBC statement, which the prepare statement extends, while the add batch method that takes no argument is specific to prepare statement. When batching prepare statements, the bind parameter values must be set prior to calling the add batch method. All DML statements can benefit from batching, as the following graphs will demonstrate. Just like for the JDPC statement test case, the same amount of data, 1000 posts and 4000 comments, is going to be inserted, updated and deleted while varying the batch size. 
The graph scale is identical to the one used for plain JDBC statements. So, right from the start, you can see that the performance is much better when batching prepare statements. The same is true for batching updates using JDBC prepare statements. As you can see from this graph, the performance gets better when increasing the batch size. And delete statements can benefit from batching as well. Therefore, all database systems show significant performance improvement when batching prepare statements. Finding the right batch size is not a trivial thing to do, as there is no mathematical equation to solve the appropriate batch size for any enterprise application. Like any other performance optimization technique, measuring the application performance gain in response to a certain batch size value remains the most reliable tuning option. As seen in the previous graphs, even a low batch size value can reduce the transaction response time, and the performance gain does not grow linearly with batch size. In fact, a very large batch size can hurt application performance if the transaction takes too long to be executed. As a rule of thumb, you should always measure the performance improvement for various batch sizes. In practice, a relatively low value between 10 and 30 is usually a good starting point. Without batching, it's quite straightforward to know which statement has failed, since every JDBC statement is executed in its own database request. When using batching, if you get an SQL exception, the failure can be triggered by any set of bind parameter values. To determine which set of bind parameter values has triggered the failure, you can inspect the update counts property of the batch update exception. The update counts property tells you how many sets of parameter values have been successfully executed prior to throwing the batch update exception. When it comes to translating entity state transitions, Hibernate uses only prepare statements for the automatically generated insert, update and delete DML statements. This way, the application is protected against SQL injection attacks and the data access layer can better take advantage of JDBC batching and statement caching. With plain JDBC, batch updates require programmatic configuration because instead of calling execute update, the application developer must use the add batch and execute batch methods. Unfortunately, performance tuning is often done only after the application is deployed into production and switching to batching JDBC statements might require significant data access code changes. By default, Hibernate doesn't use JDBC batch updates, so when inserting three post entities, Hibernate generates three insert statements. Therefore, we need to explicitly configure Hibernate to use JDBC batch updates. Unlike JDBC, Hibernate can switch to batch prepare statements with just one configuration property and no code change is required. If we set the JDBC batch size Hibernate configuration property and rerun the previous test case, we can see that a single SQL insert is being logged, which takes three sets of bind parameter values. This setting is configured at the session factory or entity manager factory level, so all sessions or entity managers created by the session factory or entity manager factory will use the same JDBC batch size. Hibernate 5.2 adds support for session-level JDBC batching. Prior to this release, there was no way to customize the JDBC batch size on a per-business use case basis. This feature is really useful since not all business use cases have the same data persistence requirements. To set the JDBC batch size programmatically, you need to unwrap the entity manager to a Hibernate session and call the set JDBC batch size method with the desired batch size value. If the entity manager uses a persistence context type extended scope, it is good practice to reset the custom JDBC batch size before exiting the current business method. By setting the session level JDBC batch size to null, Hibernate is going to use the session factory configuration the next time the extended entity manager gets reused. If the post identifier uses an identity column, Hibernate will disable batch inserts. Once an entity becomes managed, the persistence context needs to know the entity identifier to construct the first level cache entry key, and for identity columns, the only way to find the primary key value is to execute the insert statement. This restriction does not apply to update and delete statements, which can still benefit from JDBC batching even if the entity uses the identity strategy. 
Apart from batching, SQL offers bulk operations to modify all rows that satisfy a given filtering criteria. Bulk update and delete statements can also benefit from indexing, just like select statements. To increment the version of all post and post comment records, one would have to execute the following bulk update statements. To delete all post and post comment records with a version that's greater than zero, you can execute two bulk delete statements. The bulk alternative can be orders of magnitudes faster than batch updates. However, batch updates can benefit from application-level optimistic locking mechanism, which are suitable for preventing lost updates when data is loaded in a read-only database transaction and written back in a successive write transaction. Processing too much data in a single transaction can degrade application performance, especially in a highly concurrent environment. Whether using two-phase locking or multi-version concurrency control, writers always block other conflicting writers. Long-running transactions can affect both batch updates and bulk processing if the current transaction modifies a very large number of records. For this reason, it is more practical to break a large batch processing task into smaller manageable ones that can release locks in a timely fashion. The bulk update statement can be built using JPA Criteria API, therefore allowing us to vary the where clause filtering criteria programmatically. The same applies to bulk delete queries, which can also be built dynamically using Criteria API. So, when using JPN Hibernate, you can use either batching to group multiple statements together and reduce the number of database round trips, or you can use bulk update queries that allow you to modify multiple records matching the same filtering criteria using a single SQL statement. If you like this video, you are going to love my high performance Java Persistence video course. For more details, go to my blog blagmihalcha.com and check out the courses page. If you're struggling with data access performance issues, this video course will teach you how to get the most out of JPN Hibernate. You can buy each module separately or buy an entire bundle. You have unlimited access to the course material and 30 days money back guarantee. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy running your data access layer at high speeds.